learning to take off at a high density altitude. Good, hold it on the ground, don't get impatient. I'm going to hold it on the ground. Hold it on the ground. Taking All right, rotate. Right cross wind. Wow, wow. Rotate. I'm trying, I'm trying. Good, wait for it, wait for it. Now you're flying. Welcome everybody to the TFP California Mountain Flying Adventure 2015. I'm Jason Miller and I'm so happy that you're all here with us. We produced a multi-part mountain flying series. This episode focuses on high density altitude and dealing with anemic takeoff performance. So Steve and Richard were my students on this trip in one airplane. Uh, we have one CFI and two students. And I think what a lot of students don't realize is as you get into uh, more advanced training, like instructor training or airline training, there's always a student in the back seat because when you're not having to fly and your processor is not working at 90% just to fly the airplane, you can actually learn a ton. It's really the value, you know, when Steve talks about the history of flight shops being a debriefing tool for him personally, that's the kind of experience you have in the back seat. So these two guys are rotating on this trip. They each get an opportunity to fly mountain passes and take off and land in high density altitudes, but they also get the benefit of watching the other one learn, watching the other one make mistakes, and then we all kind of learn as a group in the airplane. All right, this time we're gonna set power just slightly lower than we were. Top of the green. Yeah, a little bit less, Let's call it. Uh, Skyland 21. 3 Lima. 21. 21. Yeah. Right there, there we go. Right there, let's do it. And 1 3 tries to roll in, turn to E2 close right traffic. All right, good. Airspeed's live. Yep. Feels really weird not having full throttle, but anyways, that's yep. what we're doing. Wow, airspeed's feeling slow. That's go right, that's kind of what I want you to feel. Gonna be going for you. Hey, there's your abort speed just in time. Ahead of us. Good, hold it on the ground, don't get impatient. I'm going to hold it on the ground. Hold it on the ground. Right, rotate. Right, rotate. Wow, rotate. wow, rotate. I'm trying, I'm trying. Good, wait for it, wait for it. Now you're flying. Okay. And Good, nurse it up. Pull, pull, pull. Oh, I don't want to pull it. The speed's not there. All right. Right? I, yep, I can feel it being mushy, so I just fly All right, in. full power for me. There we go. All right, that's what I want you to feel. Yeah, so that's why I didn't pull, because I knew it was mushy. All right. So I just kept it flying. I didn't have a negative climb, but I didn't have much positive. Cool. Well, that's what I wanted you to feel. That was the right thing. You didn't do anything wrong. Awesome. That first evening, we did pattern work and simulated an anemic takeoff by using partial power. But that was just a warm-up for the fairly massive trip we were doing the next day. If everybody has the route, you can see we're doing our gateway departure and we're heading down the western shore of South Lake Tahoe. Uh, the four-flight time on this is just about three hours, but with taxi time, start up to go get fuel, all the switching of pilots, I expect this to come in somewhere between 4.5 and 5 hours total. All right, um, our plane is gonna start up taxi and go get some fuel on the other side. So we're all set to go, guys. Have a great flight and we'll see you at Lee Vining. Unlike the previous evening, this was for real. And with James on board to film, we were at max growth. So no need to simulate the anemic takeoff. Rich flew this leg. This video is primarily for entertainment and we're assuming you know how to do your performance calculations. When you get out there on the runway, line up, get the airplane fully ready to go, bring power all the way in with the brakes held and don't feel impatient about it. I know it's a big, big motor, bigger than some of you are used to. Just hold hard on the brakes because you really need to confirm you've got all the power that's available. Okay, once you feel like you've got the most power you can get, you're seeing the, the highest power indications then release brakes. I'm feeling it right about there, Jason. Is yeah, that looks right to me. Okay. okay. All right. Ready to go. Yep. At our very high density altitude, the acceleration is slow. Truckee traffic, Skyland 1713 Charlie's rolling, runway 29 er Truckee. Airspeed is alive. Sometimes, I mean, it's just kind of like, really, that's it. You know, wow, that's as fast as we're going to go. And as you go down the runway, you'll hit rotation speed, you'll lift the nose wheel. Whoa. All right, hold on, let it come shallow, it shallow, shallow, shallow. And you will continue to roll down the runway. You gotta let it fly yeah, off in this thing. There is no real rotate. Kind of Not at a high density altitude, no. really, in almost any airplane. No, no. Patience, right? Just be patient. So we have to have a good place to look to maintain that directional control. And in a Cessna, it's all right here. Every bit of data you want is visible right here. You can see yaw. You can see roll, and if you have some pie shape of the runway edge line and it starts getting smaller, you're going left. Right? So right rudder to get it back to the, the shape that it was. No, I, I just need to give it a little back pressure. It, it, you cannot pull back on this sucker. Oh, you can't. 
the ambient temperature was not very hot for this morning departure. There was all sorts of additional training en route of course, and that's covered in other episodes. After several hours en route to Bishop, including a leisurely lunch stop, it was a different story. Bottom line, for the return leg it was hot, 41 degrees to be exact. During pre-flight after lunch, everybody was hiding under the wing in the shade. Midday heat can really raise the density altitude and this trap can catch unsuspecting pilots. Be sure to plan for it. We took all our electronics in for the lunch stop, but I left this one GoPro in the plane thinking it was safe because it was out of the direct sunlight. But I was wrong. It had overheated and I didn't notice that it cut immediately after I started rolling it. Now let's listen to the weather. Two, niner, eight, seven. Remarks, density altitude, 8,000. Bishop Airport. Automated weather observation 2133 three. Zulu. Wind 140 at 16. Peak gusts 23. Visibility 10. 14016 uh, one peak gusts 23. Temperature 41 Celsius. Dew point minus okay, one down four that. Celsius. If you don't have 70% of your rotation speed by the halfway point of the runway, you should abort the takeoff. You're not going to make it. So. For those of us, we're all flying the 182s today. The recommended rotation is 59, so 42 knots. But that 70% of rotation speed SOP really has your back. And this stuff isn't really just made up. Honestly, I, I'm, you guys are welcome to challenge me and push on it because if I can find holes in it, I'll change it. All right, so today we have wind from 140 at 16, gusting 23, which is right between 1.16 and 1.12. Yeah, I like that. Right 1.12 right. so. is quite a lot longer, so it seems like the obvious choice is to take right 1.12. Good. We got 7,000 foot, well, 7,500 foot runway, and we're looking at 8,000 foot density altitude, so let's just rock the longest runway possible. I like it. Okay. And uh, you know the taxi route here, you can so see we're just gonna go straight down alpha. All the way down alpha, yeah. Cool. That's right. awesome. So just do me a favor and watch that, make sure I go the right way. Okay. I can't really tell which way we're going to move. Well, all I needed to do was compare my heading to the diagram. But anyway, we had the georeference taxi diagram. And on that note, here's an interesting tidbit. We'd checked the NOTAMs, so we knew that runway 0725 was closed. The physical signs and runway markings did not match the current diagram. The Earth's magnetic field shifts over time, and runway markings need to be adjusted to deal with it. Hey, Bishop Traffic, it's uh, Skylane 1713 Charlie. We're going to be crossing from a 08, taxiing to 12. I should have said Bishop at the end of that. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's a good habit. When I was a young private pilot, I remember I took a 1967 172. And we get up there over Mammoth at like 13.5 or something. We were eastbound, so we went up to 13.5. We set our timers. We knew we could you know, only be up there for 30 minutes. And we started to lean the mixture. I mean, we, we ended up turning around because we thought there was a problem with the motor. But the more I think about it in retrospect, it was I just don't think we leaned enough. I don't think we could really believe, as young pilots who had never had a mountain check out, just how far the mixture can come out. It's really critical. So the motor started running rough. We turned on carb heat. We thought we were having carb ice. That made the motor run rough more, right? So you see what was happening is we were too rich and the motor started running rough and the carb heat enriching the mixture even more. So when you guys are out flying tomorrow, and this is for the CFIs too, just make sure you're all doing checklists diligently. Um, don't just take it for granted that you remembered the mixture. All right, it's pretty critical. There's not a lot of spots to land and a hot big motor like a 182 may or may not relight if it goes out, right? In Telluride, it was always kind of funny. We'd stand out on the, on the ramp and the lowland pilots would fly in and their engines would quit after landing on their rollout. I was wondering if you want to talk about what was going wrong with their SOPs. Yeah, that's really interesting. Justin, you want to elaborate on that? Because a lot of people are used to full rich on landing. Well, when your density altitude is at nine or 10 or 12,000 feet, you're going to flood the engine. It's not going to work out well for it. So, um, you know, some people say, oh, mixture rich for landing. You know, you leave the mixture right where it's at, that works just fine. If you have to go around, well, then you need to add power and mixture at the same time. But when you do, uh, when you're at high altitude, and especially high altitude and you're landing, just don't touch the mixture, leave it where it's at. You're not making a lot of power, you're not making a lot of heat, you don't need all that fuel in there to keep it cool. And you can always guess a little bit too, like if you know your density altitude is 8,500, not full rich, not where you were, split the difference, you know, and take a little guess at it. Okay, get on the center line and straighten out our wheels. Yep. 
So we are going to go full power brakes on, and then we're going to play with the mixture. Yeah, look for peak EGT in combination with your sense of what is the most power. Yeah. Oh, do you think we got it? Yeah. Yeah. Right. So we've been taking off at the same density altitude. Okay. Here so we go. I know. All right. Here we go. All right. This is going to feel a little bit more anemic than Tahoe. This is good. Yeah, it's needing a lot of right rudder there. It's Airspeed's here. alive. You got your abort speed. We do. Use caution because at a high density altitude, the rotation phase of the flight lasts a lot longer. You're a little bit more like a 747. All right, nice easy rotation. Yeah, gently. Put the nose wheel up. The nose wheel comes off and you wait. Wow, this crosswind's got me. And then the airplane will lift off and sometimes you have to really shallow the pitch to get your flying speed. And crabbing into the wind. A little more right road, yeah, there you go, good, perfect. All right, nice. You consider how you're getting power. Consider the halfway point of the runway. Feel the slow acceleration and use that reference point during the rotation to maintain directional control. With the support of ForeFlight and others, Jason has been releasing free training podcasts since 2005. There are hundreds of episodes in the archives and new ones released regularly. Thanks to the Patreon supporters and the Flight Shop sponsors, I got there to shoot this series with my crew. Last month, Laura won all this stuff from the sponsors plus an iPad 4 from iCloth Avionics. This month, the featured prize is a Bose A20 headset. Visit flightchops.com to win and keep your flight chops sharp. Do maximum continuous power, we're only getting 200 feet per minute. A little right rudder to stay coordinated might get us a little more. Yeah, right. as soon as I started focusing on that, I stopped focusing on that. <laughs> I know, right? There's a lot of stuff to look at in here.